What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B, and welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. So this is something I've been working on for a while now, because kitchens are, to me at least, probably the most challenging thing to decorate in this game. We have a lot of nice living room and bedroom and workshop items, and even enough to put together a decent bathroom. Although, can we please get a mirror that actually goes with all the modern bathroom stuff? But when it comes to kitchens, there isn't much. What we have has to be heavily improvised and cobbled together out of sometimes the absolute weirdest stuff. But fortunately for you, I have been at this for a really long time now, and I've got more than a few tricks to share with you. Now, I did not come up with all of these. Some of them I've been seeing around the wasteland for years now, but I figured why not compile them into one place where you can find them easily whenever you want them. But before we dive into that, if you love what I do here and you're interested in supporting this channel, why not join our Patreon family? Head on over to patreon.com slash kikibi or click on that link down in the description to find out more. Subscribing and turning on those channel notifications also really helps me out and is completely free, so go ahead and do that if you haven't. And of course, join us over on Discord and on Instagram, we would love to see you there. So now that that's out of the way, let's get cooking. First up, we've got this simple little trick that I promised to show you folks a while back, and that's how to tuck your chairs into your kitchen tables. It's as simple as breaking your table with a flamethrower trap and then placing your chairs however you like. This is great for saving space in small kitchens, but it also just adds a nice touch of realism and polish to the room in general that I really like. Tables just look kind of stupid with all the chairs sticking out the way they have to if you place them normally. This trick works with desks as well, so now your desk chair doesn't have to look super awkward and take up a ton of space either. You're welcome. We don't have any kitchen counters. Fortunately, there are some things that you can use that actually look pretty okay. This dresser stash box, if you turn it around backwards, is the simplest and honestly one of the better options for a clean, simple look in your kitchen, and it goes with a lot of different styles. If you want to get a little fancier, you can merge certain tables together to create counters with cupboards and drawers underneath. Take this coffee table, and the big wooden rectangular table. Put the coffee table on top, and once you've got that lined up the way you want it, go ahead and blueprint it to save yourself some time on subsequent counters. Then take that over to your powered pressure plate and drop merge that coffee table down in. If you're not familiar with drop merging this way, I've got a whole video on that, so go check that out. You can also merge a cooking stove into this whole counter unit if you like. To do that, you'll want to put the stove on the coffee table, merge that most of the way down in, and then move that whole unit back onto the table and merge again. That will hide the broken front of the stove and leave you with something that looks like a built-in cooktop in your counter. You can use the small cooking pot or the non-functional stove for this as well. Now, if you have some of the Atomic Shop bar sets, you can make some nice looking counters with those beyond just placing down a row of them, which I personally don't like because they're so narrow that it just looks really unrealistic. So place down a row, then put down a second row in front, but offset that by half a bar piece. Now go ahead and grab your beloved flamethrower trap and break the two end pieces on the back row and some walls along with them. This will let you snap the nice curved corner pieces on each end of the front row to just give everything a slightly more polished, finished look. If you want to go a step farther, which I recommend, you can take some of the pieces in the front row, turn off snapping, and rotate them so that the shelves are facing outward. It's all about the little details. If you want to blueprint this, it's super easy. Just leave the back end pieces out of the blueprint, the ones that you broke with the flamethrower. And then when you place it down, you can just break the corner front pieces with the flamer trap, snap in the back ends, and you're done. For another version of a counter with snapping bar pieces, we're going to do something kind of similar. Put down two rows of bars, but don't offset them. Line them up nicely, 
and you can turn some around backwards if you want. Then you're going to remove the wall behind one end and place one straight bar piece up against the end like this. Now go ahead and, you guessed it, break it with the flamer trap, and then you can replace the wall and repair the bar. This gives the counter a nice neat edge without that little gap that you'd see on the end between the two rows otherwise. Next, we're going to make some magical floating cupboards. Put one bar piece on top of the other and line them up well with the top one facing backwards. Then go and grab your camp module and bring it on in because that's how we're going to make the cupboards float. Keep picking it up and placing it on the module until the cupboard hits the ceiling and you can't go any higher. That's a good cupboard height. Now move it where you want it and blueprint this just the way it is with the floating piece to make the next ones easier. If you blueprint it when it's not floating, it will do really weird shit when you place it and it's a mess, just trust me. Anyway, repeat as many times as you want. The bottom pieces will snap together nicely and you'll end up with a lovely row of cupboards that look like they're hung on the wall. You can fill the space around these in any way you want to make a nice little kitchen unit. Isn't that cute? Now we're well versed in counters and cupboards, so why not make a kitchen island? You're basically going to build a rectangular thing out of the bar pieces, creating shelves wherever you might want them, and of course you can blueprint this for future use. Now take a table and place it down on a small rug, and you're going to float this with the camp module again. Three clicks should be just about right, depending on the table. Now set that aside and get your bar ready. Time to get out your flamer again. For this specific combination that I'm using here, I need to break one of the end pieces. If you're using a different table, you may need to break different pieces on the corner or something like that to make this work based on where your rug is. Now I'm going to pick up my floated table and I'm standing on another table just to make it easier to see. And I'm going to move that whole thing into the middle of that bar. Once it's centered nicely, you can repair the broken piece and you've got yourself a very nice kitchen island. So now on to some of the little touches that make a big difference. First up, the cooking stove. You can do this with the base game iron one or the red atomic shop one. It's got that huge stove pipe on the back and you don't always want to look at that, but if you place it in a doorway, you can change the doorway to a solid wall when you're done so that the stove pipe is completely hidden. If it's on a single wall, the pipe will be visible on the other side of the wall, which can look really cool. If it's a double wall and it's wallpapered, the pipe will disappear completely. Here's a trick that looks great in a rustic or country style kitchen. If you've got a sink, you can add a little bit of realism by using the tall vertical conduit pipe and running some horizontal pipes off the top of that. It'll look like an exposed water pipe and it's a really nice little touch. Okay, so you want a stove in your kitchen, but let's face it, the options are pretty limited. If you're looking for something a bit less rustic, you've got a couple of options. You could put down Yasmin's stove if you have her, but you may or may not want to listen to her yap about her 86 glowing meat steaks and guilty pleasures all day long. If you like a little more peace and quiet in your camp, you can grab the kitchen stove from the appliances tab and the little cooking pot and drop merge them together. You have to set the pot on the back part of the stove and then just take that over to your pressure plate, merge it down until you're happy and voila, pot on a fairly normal looking stove which you can actually cook at. The toughest thing about decorating a kitchen is that it's really hard to fill it up with nice clutter like food. We don't have any actual food that we can build in camps, but you can absolutely fake it until Bethesda makes it. Start with the Halloween pumpkins. Not the Atomic Shop ones, but the in-game spooky scorched plans. Take a couple of these and turn them around backwards. You can hardly tell from the back that they're carved pumpkins and they help fill up a kitchen really nicely. Next, you can pull out your old friend Prince the Frog. People eat frogs, and it stands to reason you'd want to keep your food as fresh as possible. So here's your dinner staying fresh on the counter. If you're expecting your good friend Dr. Lecter for dinner, you might want to put out a jarred brain. 
Of course, the punch bowl and candy bowls are always good choices for countertop clutter. The punch bowl can even be merged into a counter to pass for a sink in a pinch. And don't forget about the good old Nuka-Cola display. Even though we haven't actually had Meat Week in a while, we got some nice new plans from it a million years ago, like this fruit bowl. The potted succulents from the Atomic Shop are actually really good at passing for potted herbs or greens on the counter. This one looks like lettuce. This one always makes me think of basil or maybe mint. Ignore that one. And this one looks very much like sage. So put a few of these in your kitchen to liven things up. I've never had much use for the white spring vases, but this one here has always reminded me of a fancy cookie jar or maybe a sugar canister. I think it looks great in a kitchen and just helps give things a more realistic vibe. So we've gone over some neat tricks. Now let's take a look at how we can put some of them together to create complete kitchen looks that you can steal for your next build. This scrappy kitchen has a nice mix of stuff. I'm not sure if the bird is dinner or not with rustic cabinets, exposed water pipes, and just a nice overall trashy feel. Perfect for more lore-friendly camps. Maybe you're not into the scrappy look. Here's a gorgeous, shiny, mid-century modern kitchen with a breakfast bar and some very nice lighting. It's a shame we don't have a clean or new version of this stove without an ally attached, but eh, maybe someday. And finally, we have a full-to-the-brim, budget-friendly, no-atomic-shop-items kitchen, except for the wallpaper and floor. Do not underestimate the power of kitcheny junk in a display case. We can't build the stuff, but this works, and there are so many items you can put in here, like toasters, kitchen scales, pre-war food, dishes, all that good stuff. If you don't own a fridge, use an ice cooler. Use the small letter set to make a grocery list or menu on the plain science chalkboard. We've got food on the counter and all sorts of kitchen appliances and knickknacks. You can do so much with this stuff and if you don't have some of these plans, you can always ask a buddy to build some for you. So there you go, a great kitchen without spending a single atom, again, except for the floor and wallpaper. That's it from me today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, maybe a lot of some things. Don't forget to make sure that you're subscribed and you've turned on channel notifications so you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing video. If you liked this and you're interested in supporting the channel, check out that Patreon link, join us over on Discord and Instagram, and with that, folks, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.